respond to a popular YouTube video critical of fine tuning that's posted on the channel Atheist Voice, and it's by the friendly atheist Hamant Meda. He starts off, though, pretty well, I think, with some critiques I would actually agree with. He mentions Eric Metaxas's article that came out in the Wall Street Journal, which I think got a lot right and had some interesting arguments of the type that we would also convey on this channel. But he ventured into the realm of what I would call environmental physics, where he's claiming certain things about the likelihood or unlikelihood of a life permitting planet anywhere in the universe, claims which I think are much more difficult to assess and are not as widely accepted by physicists. In fact, one of the things that Meta mentions, I'll even go further than he did, he mentioned how Jupiter pulls dangerous asteroids away from Earth, and he seemed ready to concede that point, but I, I would like to call that into question a bit based on some recent scientific work, which said this, it has long been assumed that the giant planet Jupiter acts as a shield significantly lowering the impact rate on, er, on the Earth from both cometary and asteroidal bodies. Our results show that the situation is far less clear-cut than has been previously assumed. After this, Meta ventures into claims about gravity requiring fine-tuning to permit life, which I think are something that we would very much defend on this channel. Um, now we're in the realm of the fine-tuning of constants and initial conditions being required for life, the, the fine-tuning of physics, if you will. On this point, consider what Stanford physicist Leonard Susskind says about the fine-tuning of gravity. It's in uh, this book, actually, which I would highly recommend, even though he argues against a theistic implication. He affirms the physics of fine-tuning, and uh, it's very interesting, very, very good on the physics, even though I disagree with the philo philosophical resolution of what he, he gets into there. But he says the properties of gravity, especially its strength, could easily have been different. In fact, it is an unexplained miracle that gravity is as weak as it is. The gravitational force between electrons and the atomic nucleus is 10,000 billion, 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 billion times weaker than the electrical attraction. Were the gravitational forces even a little bit stronger, the universe would have evolved so quickly there would be no time for intelligent life to arise. As an atheist, he does end up opting for a multiverse explanation, but very much affirms that life-permitting physics is rare among possibilities. Next, Meta critiques this type of fine-tuning, saying that Regardless of the surprise odds, if they were really so unachievable, we wouldn't be here contemplating the miracle of our existence. So a common re response, and he doesn't interact with the, the responses to these kinds of claims, would be simply to point to John Leslie, the philosopher's firing squad analogy, where he, he speaks of if you were standing before a firing squad, you know, 10 highly trained marksmen, point blank range, ready, aim, fire, and you find that they all miss. He says that it's a situation in which you're, although you're not surprised that you did not observe that you're dead, you are rightly surprised that everyone missed. The unlikelihood of the situation demands an explanation. You would rightly, in this case, I think, suspect that it was rigged in some way by firing blanks or the commander telling them to intentionally miss or something of that nature. Or also consider John Hawthorne's warning against throwing out fine tuning as evidence. Just because if it weren't there, we couldn't learn the evidence. Now, Hawthorne is a, a, quite a prominent philosopher. He's now at USC after spending about a decade at Oxford, and he's a recognized expert in epistemology, how we know things. And he says this, suppose there's a firing squad and there's two boxes of guns, one that's faulty and one that's not. I survived the firing squad. That is awesome evidence that they used the faulty guns. Of course, if I hadn't survived the firing squad, I wouldn't have learned that I survived the firing squad. And he also says the second problem with this objection is its irrelevance. We're not talking about the relevance that the universe is life permitting, but the evidential relevance that life permitting physics is rare. We could have learned this to be false. Next, Meta likens fine tuning to Douglas Adams' puddle analogy, where the puddle falsely assumes design based on his exact fit to the hole. Now, I've devoted a video specifically to this objection because it does show up quite often. In it, I've detailed how it's disanalogous. So the short version of the response, though, would be to just to say that fine-tuning has revealed that most configurations of constants and initial conditions do not support life. Whereas in the hole analogy, I mean, any, any hole is going to hold water. It doesn't have to be a particular shape at all. So it's, it's totally disanalogous to the fine-tuning. I also reference atheist physicist David Deutsch's critique of this puddle as an analogy to fine-tuning, where he says that it doesn't hold water. He specifically looks at this 
as an analogy to, to fine tuning and he says it doesn't hold water. Next, Meta gives several examples of unlikely things happening and argues that therefore there's no reason to look for a deeper explanation to fine tuning. For example, he argues that fine tuning is no more surprising than that one magical sperm fertilizing the egg resulted in you. Here I'd like to refer you to Luke Barnes' blogs in which he details a refutation to this exact claim as previously made by Vic Stinger. See the link in the notes there. Barnes says that if you, you could think of it as sort of filling a bag with balls representing the vast number of possible outcomes of different egg sperm combinations. And if fate goes into the bag and out you come, why isn't this anything special? Because there's nothing to single out this ball, improbable though it is, while it is still in the bag. We only know who you are after you come out of the bag. You are not specified independently of the choice of the ball. Whatever ball comes out of the bag, the corresponding person can proclaim, I win, because in this game, everyone wins just by playing. He goes on to say that the universe is not special because it's ours. It's special because it can support intelligent life. When we consider the fine-tuning of the universe, we are not considering the probability of this universe. We're considering the probability of a universe that supports intelligent life. Choose a different sperm and you get a different person. Choose a different universe and you almost certainly do not get a different form of intelligent life. You get no intelligent life at all. The fine-tuning of the universe involves a low probability event and an independently specified target and thus cannot be dismissed as just another low probability event. Meta's next objection is that if some of those constants were different, it's true that we may not be here as us, but maybe some other planets and life forms could have just evolved. Maybe we would have, would have adapted to different conditions, who knows? Well, lots of physicists have written articles claiming that life couldn't originate without finely tuned constants and initial conditions. So if he wants to dispute that, he needs to interact with the 200 plus articles claiming this. And he certainly haven't given, given us any reason within his video for thinking that these physicists are wrong. He's not really interacting with the evidence in any kind of detailed way. Just looking at one example to see how clear cut it is, the cosmological constant if it differed by just, say, one part in 10 to the 90th power, it would have either caused an incredibly rapid recollapse of the universe, had it been negative with that magnitude, or if it was a small positive number of that magnitude, it would have caused a runaway expansion to the universe such that the whole universe would have just been a thin hydrogen soup in which protons would just collide off each other on time scales of billions of years and the next collision after that would be exponentially longer in between collisions as it continues to expand with this exponential growth. So in such a universe where you couldn't really store or replicate information, is it reasonable to think that life could evolve there? I don't think it's reasonable. Meta goes on saying, but to say that the universe was fine-tuned just for us requires this assumption that we're special, that everything in the universe was geared towards our creation. It's a very arrogant approach to the world. Well, actually, once again, he's misunderstanding the fine-tuning claims. These don't just consider human life or require an assumption that in any way humans are special. Look, for example, at the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, where it says, considerations according to which the laws of nature, the values of the constants, and the boundary conditions of the universe are fine-tuned for life refer to life in general, not merely human life. According to them, a universe with different laws, constants, and boundary conditions would almost certainly not give rise to any form of life. So I think he needs to do more research and reading on the fine-tuning topic to, before critiquing it. Maybe he needs to deal with what the physicists are actually writing and how the philosophers are framing it as an argument for God as the best explanation of the fine-tuning. I think it's quite different than he's assuming he next appeals to the fact that humans can't live in most areas of the universe as a defeater to the fine-tuning argument, complaining about these vast, inhospitable regions. Again, this objection is quite common, so I've spiked that out into a separate video. I plan on writing, doing response videos for a number of these popular videos online, and many of them say the same points over and over again, so I need to avoid repetition in my own videos by spiking those out separately. So the short version, though, of the response to this would be that 
it's a misunderstanding of the fine-tuning claim. It doesn't really apply to the claim where we say that life permitting physics is rare among possibilities. For our claim, we have to compare the universe that we live in with other possible universes based on other laws, constants, and initial conditions. Uh, it says nothing at all about looking within our universe. Also, if you start trying to do what he's proposing here, for example, adding breathable air into space, you end up ruining the universe for life. Uh, Barnes and Lewis in the Fortunate Universe book note that the universe would collapse in a day at that density. Likewise, Earth couldn't maintain its orbit around the sun for more than a few months if it was slowed by the drag induced by such a, a gas in, the, in space itself. Maida then says in closing that it's a silly argument and if someone uses it, it tells you more about, tells you way more about that person's flawed thinking than it does about how we came to exist. Well, I think our friendly atheist has at most created a straw man that is silly, but one that isn't representative of the fine tuning argument as espoused by leading advocates such as Luke Barnes, Robin Collins, John Hawthorne, or Sir John Polkinghorne, or even actually what skeptical physicists who don't accept the theistic inference are saying about the physics of fine tuning. If Meta thinks that t even top scientists from his own worldview have flawed thinking, I recommend studying their physics articles. Meta seems to find nothing even surprising or unlikely in the physics of fine tuning. So I challenge him to heed the warning of atheist David Deutsch. He's the Oxford physicist and Royal so Society fellow who has said that if anyone claims not to be surprised by the special features that our universe has, he's hiding his head in the sand. These special features are surprising and unlikely.